Bum. Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm going to be doing a painting tonight. A little bit different than the normal comic stuff, but anyway. Hi, Dave, joined by my beautiful wife, Kimberly. Hello. She's going to be reading questions so that I can focus on painting. I have a crazy back pain right now, so I'm just kind of... I'm trying to do something that doesn't have as high stakes as the comic does because I had to take some drugs to not be in this like crazy crunch mode. Like my back is like Rice Krispies in it. So, uh, yeah, I can't I can't focus on chat, paint this and be a human being all at the same time on drugs. Yeah, he's so, well, and he's barely surviving with the pain anyway. <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And I will be painting this random guy. He's not from anything, and it's not for anything. It's just a guy. Just a random painting I was playing with this afternoon. I finished up my gigantic deadline that I've had since November. And that felt crazy. It was a long time coming. Yeah, I felt like there was like a weight lifted once you finished. Yeah, it was just, I mean, I, I don't know how other people feel about this stuff, but for me, I get really like down towards the end of a deadline. Like I don't really know how to describe it. I don't. I don't get like depressed, but I just feel like, ugh. Like for some reason that doesn't excite me, and I have no idea. Like I don't it's know what that is. Because you're a perfectionist, is. and you you want it to be, you know, just so. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely part of it. I just get, like, super obsessed with stuff and it feels like I'm never ending it. Maddie, hi, hi Maddie. He says, do you have one of those massage guns? That might help or hurt. He has our kids walk on his back and just... Oh, yeah. Just yeah. dig your heel right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it feels good when they do that when they actually listen and do it the right way I have to like lay out all the ground rules of like okay you're not going to jump up and down on my neck okay <laughs> just <laughs> just step here don't kill me you're not going to sneak up from behind me and put something around my neck and strangle me okay <laughs> I gotta tell you something funny uh chat um we were putting the kids to bed tonight and one of our kids, Axel, he was uh, telling me a story, like a bedtime story that he came up with. And at first it was about like a golden cyclops and grandpa cyclopses and fighting all these mystical creatures and whatever. And then <laughs> it finally got to his inventions and the best one that he came up with, the best concept. If anybody's, you know, looking for something to draw or at least <laughs> execute frame by frame, is he came up with this awesome idea of a meat sword. And the thing that happens is you, you have this <laughs> meat sword and you go to swing it at an unsuspecting victim. And they just see this, this thing of meat coming and they go to bite it. And then when they open up their mouth to take a bite of the meat, there's actually a blade inside of the meat and it cuts their head off. Or. <laughs> <laughs> You made me laugh so hard. I was like, that's an amazing idea, Axel. <laughs> Please do that. Please make a meat sword. I, mean, it's I a didn't genius. get a new mic. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm using my AirPods. I don't know. Dave must have uh, mastered my vocals. Mixed them. Yeah. Yeah, we got to... Uh have that other mic set up we do have it 
We have like the whole thing ready to go. It's just a matter of actually doing it. And cleaning up this room, really. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much shit in here. Have like, um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how you all are with like prints, but it's one thing to like support artists and buy prints. It's another thing to get them framed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like getting them framed is so expensive and it's just a whole other commitment. And you just end up with so many unframed prints in this house. And that's a lot of my office. Yeah. Well, I mean, now that we're in our house too, I feel like that'll all change. Yeah. Um, Yakobo says, Hello Dave and Kim, this isn't an art related question. My female coworker invited me to a party and I'm considering going. Any tips on how to not be an awkward incel? Love what you do and thanks. Well, just be involved with people. Be try not to like second guess yourself or anything. I mean, it's mostly be interested just interested in what they're saying. Yeah, listen. Just listen be present, and ask. Yeah. You know, if if you're just like trying to get comfortable in that setting then yeah like listen and then contribute if you want or just riff off of whatever they're talking about <laughs> like yeah i mean it but also don't depends. like overcommit. <laughs> but is this coworker asking you as a friend then you know this is this is advice for just being in a social situation i would get to know anybody guy or girl you said female coworker. you know this Try, try to make friends and then you know I think at the base of a good relationship if you're looking for a girlfriend is to be friends yeah uh, I'm on just enough drugs to think rendering textures on a helmet is really fun <laughs> just like <laughs> oh shit let's get in all these little nooks and crannies here um, Maddie says, I tried to get four 10 inch by 12 inch frames for prints I bought from Miles Johnston, but it would have been $200 at a store near me. Oh my God. Yeah. So I bought cheap four pack frames from Amazon for like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have both. We've gone places to get stuff framed. It's so expensive, but it like, there's a clear difference. <laughs> There's a there's a very distinct than the ones that we have, like from our Amazon one, because we went to like a really nice place, and it was just, just just actually what two of them that we've gotten framed, that's it. Yeah, before we, we had, had like, kids, we were just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> now we just like I don't see what know. the nicest. That's version crazy of this to, is. it's crazy to yeah. just drop like hundreds of dollars on the frame of a thing. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. If it's good, you know, if it has to match the artwork, if that's important to you, then mm -hmm. obviously go into like get a real frame or like framer to frame it. It makes the most sense. Plus, you get the museum glass. I'm just going to take up woodworking and then in my retirement, and I'll just start making picture frames. I know. Out of the twigs in our backyard. It's fine get paid like 500 bucks <laughs> yeah I made one there you go <laughs> do you have music on I'm, I muted the stream I'm just listening to you so yeah. I'm sitting in silence okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I got music on sorry <laughs> I'm just like I'm so easy to zone out right now. Just staring at this. I was just wondering, face. are we both just sitting in silence? And it's just... yeah, this is a little Zen stream. What? I think this outlet is like from the 60s because it keeps falling out on its own. Well, our house is from the it's 60s. From the original owners.
<laughs> this oh, nice. is just a complete <laughs> just complete zen mode right now just doing something like this that doesn't matter <laughs> at all the cryptid mace is my dad is a woodworker and my mom is a picture framer so that's what they ended up doing he made the frames and she put it all together that's cool that's cool Do you still have all of your prints available on imprint? I mean, I can't think of all what I took Ninja down Turtles? from there. No, Just I put those Turtles, up at right? like a, a random time. Like It was like a very short period of time, right? I, th I think I put them up around like the anniversary of when I did them or something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Why somebody asked for them? Uh... Yeah, a couple of people had asked me. Yeah, those are like my number one requested, like anything for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Do we have any of the originals? Um, I think we do, right? A little bit, not a lot. The Ninja Turtles themselves, like I think they're all gone. I thought we had one of each, at least. I don't know. Maybe. Dan has all of them. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the only one we don't have is Raphael. Mm -hmm. That was the one everyone wants Raphael. That was like the one that we sold out of the first, you know, first yeah. stack. Didn't we? Yeah, he usually sells out pretty quick. Did you say what you're drawing for the people who are just joining? Just a random painting. I, I hurt my shoulder, so I didn't want to commit to doing like a, a comic page tonight. So instead of calling it quits and not doing a stream, I figured why not just render this Viking thing, <laughs> this random drawing that I started today. I offered. I offered to paint for him. Said, just put a beard on me. I'll wear a hat. I'll tape my eyes open more. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'll, I would draw whatever you guys would want. And it would have been a dream come true. Dave Raposa drawing chat suggestions. Mm -hmm. It would have worked. I was painting this one with the uh, kind of kind of grayscale, and then adding like gradient maps to it after, and just playing with different stuff. That's what all these layers are. I'll probably do like a slight gradient map with this one. Uh, Maester Blaster says, "Kim, did the kids beat up Dave again?" I mean, they always fight me. That's like the number one request. Yeah, they they do. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh... My oldest jumped off of the toilet <laughs> and punched the ground and said, Demon punch! <laughs> 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 when he thought nobody was looking. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, they're always fighting.
Sorry for my silence again. I'm in deep meditation. <laughs> There's no questions yet. I would be reading. Oh, uh, here's okay. one. It doesn't um, matter. A bood. <laughs> Dude, just how many years takes to get this perfection? How many years does it take to get this? Mm hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I've been working for. 17 plus years I guess mm -hmm. and I don't feel very perfect I actually don't care about that I don't care about perfection but I don't think you ever feel like you're doing incredible work or anything it's more about just enjoying yourself while you're doing it but I appreciate you just finished um i'm not sure actually it's not super far away Martin patel says what's this for nothing just for fun kind of wanted to see what it would be like to render out a painting with this uh, approach. I can show you the approach. No, oh, that looks good so far. All right, so the approach is that I do a really loose sketch in, in Photoshop, and then I, I go over that sketch with inks in Krita. And then I paint on top of that in Clip Studio with the watercolor brush. Like that. And then after that, I just started using this Photoshop, more like textural brush from Greg Rutkowski. And that's, uh, yeah, this next phase. How did you hurt your shoulder? I have no idea. Slept on it wrong? <laughs> it's all it feels like I did, is like sleep on it wrong. I also spent like a decent amount of time lately like building the kids stuff in, their, in the yard and just kind of, I don't know, moving heavy things a little Gonda bit more than it's... normal. <laughs> Is this what Dan looks like nowadays? This Viking? He's Dan's starting to stream. You can see what Dan looks like when you catch his live streams. <laughs> yeah. I shared his link in the Discord if you're part of that. Um, I think you can subscribe to his YouTube channel if you want to get. Yeah, notified. Dan's been doing it pretty often. So, I think he's already done like four or five or something. Yeah.
And no, this isn't Dan. Dan's beard is way crazier than this. Aaron Koji said, can you scare Dave for us? So that's why I came in there. And then... <laughs> okay, I was wondering if that's what that was supposed to be. I was like... But you guys, I had to like... I have to like wiggle the door so my dog moves out of the way so that I can get into the room. So by that point, I'm like already making a ton of noise. <laughs> When is the next Discord challenge starting up? We have to finish the review for this last one, the second half of the review, and then we can talk about banning that. Yeah. We don't have a date. My deadline that wrapped up for my big job was officially this past, well, yesterday technically, but they asked for a few more things for the rest of the week. So I just wrapped that up and now I'm free. So you really, still... whenever, <laughs> like we could get started, you know, if we could announce it and have it all organized, like the start of next week. Like... Sorry. It's okay. But I think like the start of next week, we could probably do it. So I literally just wrap stuff up and we'll just do all the uh, reviews too. L literally by like, we mean four o'clock today. <laughs> Um, Mooney says, what's your favorite ghost story? Um, my favorite ghost story? I don't know. I, I, I don't know another, like, a bunch of ghost stories. I just, like... Mine is the one my uncle told me when he was in a boat on his way from the Philippines to America and the boat got stuck and it was on a cemetery island and the ghost pushed the boat back into the water and they made it safely through their journey. That's pretty cool. That might be my favorite ghost story. <laughs> that is a really good one. <laughs> um, Just because it's like, I think my favorite part of that story when, when he was telling that was like it, and he start crying that, that there was no i don't remember that but there was no like question of whether or not like ghosts are real or how i'm gonna take it or anything because mm -hmm. he didn't ask me like do you believe in ghosts do you want to hear the story he just started telling it like here's this thing that happened this is just fact. yeah and i love that i love that approach to just like full-on believing those things and just indulging in it like that that's just normal for you to believe that that's real it's a, it's just great it's like very refreshing to see somebody just like down <laughs> mm -hmm. I was going to tell a ghost story when we first met and I was going to tell it as if it was just truth as well and then I was stopped <laughs> I didn't I was going to embarrass my date <laughs> by telling a ghost story, so I got hushed. Don't <laughs> <laughs> tell that story, it's embarrassing, it's embarrassing, people are going to think I believe in ghosts. <laughs> Mr. Super Spartan says, Hey Dave, I was wondering if you've ever used Procreate and what your thoughts on it compared to other art programs. Thanks ahead of time. Uh, is not it Procreate enough also only for iPad? Yeah, I just I haven't had enough experience with it. That's that's really the answer. So I've never really got comfortable with it. Yeah, Gondo says that he saw one of Dan's streams. Where he showed his setup it's amazing i know that for that top floor is like yeah it's ridiculous so pretty with that church stained glass um odd mimics is dave please tell me what you can you at kimberly please for the questions try yeah, to scan through them easier. um Please tell me what you did to the chrome brush to make it do mid-tones like gray. No matter how I work the pressure settings, I can't get it right. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't really able to get it 
for like a long time until I spent, I think like a year with it. But if it's something where you're not getting the right tones, you might be using the wrong brush. I mean, if you're looking for like the more painterly one, then you'd have to use the sketching Chrome large, I believe. But uh, if you're looking for like closeness of line when you're going between like the hatching look, that that just usually has to do with your DPI. So if you make like a, like I usually work at 450 DPI and kind of like the bare minimum for my pixels like height wise or horizontally is like 6,000. Th that's the settings I'm usually working at. Aaron Koji says that he's seen a ghost story before on a show called Sightings. They had this guy sit on a chair and these cuts just started appearing. It was wild. <laughs> yeah, Kobo says, I'd be really cool if uh, you did a comic challenge again. I've been uh, seeing your Star Veil pages and they've been pretty inspiring. I managed to get better at digital line art because of it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'd be down to do more comic-oriented uh, challenges. I uh, obviously want to gear more of my work to that anyway. I do think storytelling is very important, but We'll see like when we can get to organizing another one of those. I just want to make sure that we make good on our promises so far. Richard Patel says, what's this guy's name? Doesn't have a name. His name? Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Purple Bertles? His name's the... Uh, it's just that it's C U N T. That's his name. Is it Dum Dum? <laughs> it's it's Dum Dum. <laughs> my name is Dun Dum Dum Cunt. That's <laughs> my full name. <laughs> Dum Dum is what uh, our son refers to himself as. Yes, we're like, that's we're my like name did anybody name. did anybody ever call you that or something? Like, where are you getting this from? And he goes. I'm Dum Dum. <laughs> That's just my name. But it's actually not. You're not Dum Dum. I love Dum Dum. So stupid. Arms Reach says I remember Dan talking about how creepy his house was growing up or a property they were renting, maybe? All of the above, everything around surrounding that family is haunted. Yeah, they're, they have they're poor souls. Wild look. They're cursed. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a fair amount of. a fair amount of, like, spooky stories between Dan and I. This guy, uh, this guy is not part of the veil. No, this something. is just random. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I'm just in a weird headspace, feeling shitty right now. Just like trying not to mess up the comic while I'm kind of hurting a bit. So that's what this is. This is a break from the comic so that I can still stream without messing anything up. Um, have you heard of Dan 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 the Dan? It's a manga. It's a manga about UFOs and the occult. I have not. I maybe I feel like I've heard the name, but I've never seen anything. Yes, Dum Dum Cunningham. <laughs> yeah. Lil Dum Dum. Hollow Bean says, Howdy, Mr. Raposo. 
longtime admirer of your work, and I was inspired to take up foodie artistry since the start of the year. Hey, thank you. Well, thanks for coming to hang out. Is Dave still haunted by Aiden screaming? No. No. You have to become in tune with um, your own children's crying and screaming, so... <laughs> and it all goes out the window. Um, Suki says, I'm doing a skill test right now for an adult game. Do you think they... Do you think it will affect my future opportunities? I want to be a fantasy illustrator, by the way, like working for magic Pathfinder stuff. No, I don't think so. And if you're really worried about it, then just go by like a pen name or something. Hey, Dan's here. Oh, hey, Dan. He says, that's Garrick Hellshout. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah, Garrick. I know Garrick. Well, Dan only knows because he's read my fic about him. <laughs> I wrote a long fucking fic about him. We watched, um, how many episodes? One? Two of Jack Reacher? <laughs> no, we didn't even finish the first one. <laughs> we like five episodes. <laughs> yeah, it was dragon for us. It was funny. And then, and then who do I see on my For You page but Jack Reacher himself singing? Mm -hmm. Raphael says, Hey, been following your art since I was super addicted to magic. Also been drawing since a very young age. And seeing your streams inspired me to do my own and try out Critta's Chrome Brushes. Oh, great. I like hearing... I mean, like, I feel like you've read a couple of these, like, back-to-back -back of people coming in with a nice thing to say like that. It's very nice. I like hearing that okay. people get something from anything I'm doing. So, yeah. Because I feel like when you're a freelancer, you're not a part of, like, a company ever. Like, you're never really around, like, people who, you know, are actively, like, invested outside of you as a person, like, in whatever you're doing. And, like, you just feel like you're, like, nobody really sees it or something, because you never hear about it from anybody. So it's nice in these streams to hear that that's, that my work in some way made you want to do something, reached you. It's very nice. Gondo says Kim should be working on Star Veil comic while you're resting. I said. Yeah. What, you want me to draw a cat? Let me at it. Have you seen my Pikachu drawings? The Pikachu drawings are good. So, Mobart asks, when you're drawing comics, do you map out a character's exact dimensions and proportions, or do you just eyeball it? Uh, I eyeball it, but I also kind of know them. So, like, I, I have an understanding of those things, and I, I kind of just measure equally, like, just visually, you know? The guy, so I'm, I'm very conscious of that, but I don't, like, do like uh, literal measurements or anything to get it consistent. Um, King Jackal says, I don't use Krita. What is a Chrome brush? Uh, it's just one of their default sketching brushes, but it's great for doing like inks and doing paintings and things, the different versions of it. And it's a free program, so it's it's really nice. Um, 
Leverton says, Dave, do you usually reach out and apply for your freelance projects or are clients usually the ones who are contacting you? It, it's a mix. If there's a job like I really want to do for somebody, I'll reach out to them directly. Like I did that with uh, some video game company semi recently because I saw that they were they were working on basically the spiritual successor to Mass Effect. And I was like, huh, I wonder if that's going to be good. And I just like looked into it a bit. And the trailer didn't necessarily grab me, but I had to like check myself there because I remember seeing the initial Mass Effect stuff before I played it and thinking like, oh, that looks kind of generic. And then when I played it, I was like, oh, this is incredible. So I have high hopes for them. And I reached out to the art director on Twitter. I, I basically throw my hat in the ring. <laughs> Let's go, you know, if possible, if I'm, I'm if you interested. feel I'm a good, yeah, if possible, and if you're interested and you feel I'm a good fit for this, I would love to contribute mm -hmm. in some way. I did the same thing with Baldur's Gate 3, like before it came out, because I was mm -hmm. a big Baldur's Gate fan, and then they let me work on uh, uh, that reveal art for the Dark Urge. But that's also due to just me having had like a, you know, decently long career working in things where enough people follow me that it's easy enough for me to DM them. But I would, but what I used to do was essentially the same thing before I knew anybody where I would just kind of do the work that I thought would get me a job and then post it somewhere where like I could get enough traction to have them notice me. So I, I generally would kind of go after clients in some roundabout way. Dan says, this isn't Garrick Hellshout, this is Squint, Squint Horn. <laughs> I think that's my nickname. <laughs> I think you're mixing that up with me. Squint horn. This is squint horn. <laughs> no, squint, flint horn. Squint, flint horn. Oh, very cool. That's, <laughs> that's even better. Draw the dark urge playing Skyrim with sex mods. That's the real dark urge. <laughs> It's true. Our dog turned 16 today. Woo! The one that's always farting in Dave's <laughs> office. That one. Yeah. Still around. Still. An old sweet girl. No, she's very sweet. That means Dave's birthday is in one week. Mm -hmm. One week. I'm going to be 37. But I feel like a 12-year-old. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Raphael says, I did get a lot, not only from the streams as a kid. What got me into magic was the art. Thought of my deck uh, more as an art book and used them for drawing, painting references, and discovering artists. Oh, that's awesome. I did the same thing when I was young. Like, uh, I remember I met my friend Matt when I was in preschool. And then by the time we were in, I think, like, first grade or something we were going to the card shop after school 
and just like staring at all the packs and like booster things and all that. I was just kind of like begging my parents to buy me one. And uh, eventually I got it. And I remember looking through all the artwork and I think Matt's uh, brother was playing first or something. And that's how we were like looking at the cards. But the artwork was the thing that immediately drew me in. And I just thought like it was so cool. There was, uh, you know, it was very like heavy metal magazine style fantasy artwork mixed with some more contemporary illustrators. But it, it was kind of all over the place in terms of style. So that like amount of diversity and just what you could do with the cards was always so appealing to me. Which is honestly like the unfortunate part of where they're at right now is it feels like there's a very strict adherence to a style guide and having like a consistent world versus back in the day when it was just like wild fantasy illustrations. The secret lair is their like answer to that where they have, you know, different artists come in that aren't just straight up typical like fantasy art style and all. Um, people are saying, let's see. Maddie says, what? Happy birthday. Happy early birthday. Dave looks great for 37. Happy birthday. Thanks. Um, King Curry says, I am starting a YouTube channel just as a hobby and writing a video on inspirations and include some clips of your streams and whatnot. Guaranteed that nobody will see it. <laughs> well... That's what these streams are for. Uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You just take them. I only have one request now that I think about it. If I say anything motivational please don't put music behind it <laughs> please don't do that to me the only music you can put behind it is that that song at the end of gladiator where he talks about you know he's gonna be with his kids you can put that behind it <laughs> That's it. Or the Amazing. song from the club song from Blade. <laughs> um, what type of tools are you using? Uh, right, right now I'm just using Photoshop, and I've just been using one brush the whole stream. It's just a a brush from Greg Rutkowski. I like rendering one side of the helmet and then having it be completely inconsistent with the other side. <laughs> it's fine. Have you heard anything about the TikTok being banned potentially? A little bit. I saw that that it was, I don't know if it had gone through, but I saw uh, the articles 80, up today. 80 something percent passed it as a, I don't really know the judicial system that well, but passed it as a bill and then they're going to try to put it into legis legislation i think mm -hmm. i said all the right words i don't know yeah so it's, it's like people voted it in but it still needs to go through another process yeah i mean we'll see i i kind of doubt it's going anywhere the house i'm pretty sure senate hasn't happened yet thank you okay. i don't know i don't know these terms very well my public education in the hood didn't really serve me very well for these types of things <laughs> for civic geography and you know history and all of those things
Is it an oil brush from Ratowski? Yep. I believe so. Does Dave still play magic? I mean, I never really did. I just looked at the artwork. That, that was like my consumption of magic back in the day. It was just like buying the card packs to just look at it. But uh, I would play. Just not, not very much. And not like, you know, I wasn't seeking it out, trying to get good at it. Kim's vocabulary doesn't extend fully past words like Glock and getting capped. <laughs> you know, I I feel like it just never crossed any of the subjects that I was studying to become a nurse, so then it just never really became a priority. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> What? Dan? What do you say? I got Dave a very expensive birthday present. Uh, present. <laughs> present, not present. Who? On accident. Dan said this. Yeah, but you said you got me a birthday present. Which one? <laughs> a very expensive one. Oh my god, it's Garfield oh, for On sure. Accident. It was an accident though. So maybe he meant to get the second most expensive president. And he ended up getting the most expensive one on accident. Oh no. Oh, what are you going to do? Uh, is it a thing that I knew about, Dan? <laughs> Calvin Goolidge. <laughs> The ghoul version of Coolidge. <laughs> I think Dan told me what it was. Mm, cool. I'm excited. Well, he told me because he was like, I'm not sure if this is appropriate because I just want to make sure. God, it's make Heather sure that Locklear. you didn't <laughs> make sure that you didn't already have it. Oh. Richard Nixon, the lich version of Richard. <laughs> Abraham Stinkin. <laughs> <laughs> What music do you have on? Just like electronic music. White bat audio on uh, YouTube. Mm. Rotold Reagan. Boo. <laughs> that was Riley. Boo, Riley. Boo. There's 115 people in here, says Nemanja. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the one where I'm drugged up because my back's hurting. So I'm just kind of zoning out, painting this Viking helmet that means nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not even a Viking helmet, it's just a thing I'm making up. It's more like a bug helmet at this point. More like a bug helmet at this point. <laughs> it is what it looks like. <laughs> it's 
I would love to be able shit. to go watch Dune too. I know. Did somebody you ask know what if I we'd saw seen instead? it? They are saying, are you planning on watching it? Yeah. I saw Kung Fu Panda 4. <laughs> Don't be jealous because... Hmm. Twists and turns, I tell you. The comic is not finished yet. I don't know what just happened to the music. Now we really are sitting in silence. If anyone knows anything about gardening, a vegetable garden, please yeah, DM join me up in the Discord. and tell me that, yeah, in the Discord, please tell me any anything that's helpful. Or like one thing that you think was the most helpful thing. I would very much appreciate that. That was Kung Fu Panda. I am ironically excited to see it. I mean, it was fine. It wasn't anything like some incredible story. Um, just for the kids. Yeah, I just saw it for my kids. It's the, it's the most fun type of memory because of their reactions. Our theater is really nice, though. It's, it serves food, so I ordered some, and like good food too. That's um. Did you try that dip? Yeah, that's good. It's like um, it's a patch chili gravy dip. Like it's kind of fancy for a movie theater. I feel like for chicken strips. I know nothing about vegetable gardening except jalapenos are amazing and tasty. It's true. What kind of veggies? I have a handful right now, and then I want to buy a couple more seeds potentially. So I have rainbow carrots. I have them right here. Rainbow yeah, carrots. We're gonna have a garden on the side of our house. And we can. Some French radishes. Stop paying for silly things. Mm -hmm. Some cilantro, some cucumber, some lettuce, some Roma tomatoes, and sweetie tomatoes. We always buy them. I mean, literally, we always buy them. And then my son picked out one. I let him pick out one. He picked out this. I don't know what this is. I have no idea how this will go. What does it say? It's an orange tender sweet watermelon. It's orange. <laughs> and then some flowers to help the pollinators. But, I don't know, I wanna grow a couple more things too. I wanna grow some Thai chilies and some Thai basil and some Yeah, mint. I'm excited for us to have all that stuff going. Uh-huh. It's funny that just like getting older, I feel like I just get more and more into very, I don't know if they're like adult things, but just more of like when you saw like your parents getting excited about something like that, you're like, why would you ever be excited yeah. about that? And like now it's like, just like taking care of the yard and all that. Like I really enjoy it. <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. oh, that's like such a boring about a thing. Being vacuum or something. Yeah. And you're like, wow, is that that boring? Yeah. But then it's great. so much, it's so much of your life that. <laughs> so exciting. It's nice when it's not shit. I think I might have to do above ground planters because the area that I we're gonna put our our garden is a little bit sloped into the neighbor's yard, so I think we're gonna have to build something up a little bit. But mm -hmm. it has like 
irrigation over there already set up or something of the source. We have to see how that works if we're going to do planters. Because it was already like made to be a garden. So. Did you, did you guys see that Aki Bright McDonald's manga collab? What is that about? Reading manga on McD food packaging? I don't, I don't know. What I did that not is. see that. that. That's pretty cool. That's weird. <laughs> what do I need to know about gardening? I guess, like... Is composting worth it? Is that something that I should research on how to do? What's sufficient for like a... Mm. What are like plants that How long that would you say? Like plants? a 30, 30 foot by maybe 20 foot, 20 foot by three foot garden, something like that. Kim, which iconic Nintendo villain do you hope Mario and Luigi team up with Bowser to defeat in the Super Mario Bros. <laughs> movie 2 in theaters, summer 2026? Um, Sounds like a damn question. <laughs> I don't know. Iconic Nintendo villain? Like across all of Nintendo? They would put that in the Mario and Luigi movie? No, they won't mm. do that. No? I mean, they put Donkey Kong in there. Yeah, but I think they would do... I think, like, Donkey Kong and Mario have been... You know, that was, like, the first Mario game. It's, like, him climbing up to get, you know, Donkey Kong. Or to save the Princess Daisy or whatever. Hmm. So that's not that crazy. That's not like a huge stretch. But what would be absolutely fucking insane would be if Kirby was in it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of actual like Mario villains that are remotely popular. What I'm reading. I was just reading about tomatoes and stuff. People were giving me their tips. <laughs> oh, okay. You can keep doing that. It's just like... Um, <laughs> Jack Black is one of those actors who's so pure you can't imagine seeing a headline saying how bad of a person he is. Sure. I'm just reading the... Teleprompter. It'd be like waking up and learning on Twitter that Dave had had been beating up Kim for years. It's just not going to happen. He's too smart to get caught. <laughs> That's true. I'm so smart. Nobody would ever catch me. I know. He's, he has bad dreams and, you know, his hand comes flying over or his elbow. And I wake up and go, baby, you all right? It looked like it hurt. You go, what? Yeah. It looked like it hurt. <laughs> You were sleeping. Oh, did I say that? Kim, if you have a big yard and uh, feel like mowing will be a pain, look into micro clover. It grows short, but the downside, I think, is not very resistant to often stepping. I mean, we should just do that for our front yard. We're never in the front yard. And I don't, we don't want to mow it. And yeah. I've always liked the look of it. It just looks so, like, ethereal, kind of magical, whimsical, and I feel like that will go with our uh, color that we want to pick. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, Dan says, imagine if Nintendo sets up a cinematic universe that culminates in a Super Smash Bros. Avenger-style film. Film. <laughs> well, if that film ever comes out, uh, I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a part of that <laughs> world. Please don't do that, Nintendo.
Erin says, I feel like a lot of artists, including myself, want to use AI. Do you find 50% human, 50% AI is more fair than just straight AI? I mean, if you're already talking about fairness, then no. But if like you don't care about that stuff, then that's up to you as an individual. Like if you're, <laughs> if you're like, God, I really want to do this, but I don't want people to hate me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a different thing. But I don't feel myself wanting to use AI. I've done the thing of using like shortcuts to solve problems and whatever, but all those shortcuts I've ever done, at least in this respect, is make me lazy in some way or another. And I just don't get a lot of plus to it. Like it's a plus that it's so quick, but then why am I even doing it just for expediency? Like just so that like I don't have to do it. Like then I'm just erasing myself slowly. I like this question. Um, Dave, why are you an artist? Uh, the truth is just, I always wanted to do it. That was it. Like, I wasn't only doing this, but I was always being creative in some way. Like I grew up making like short films with my friends, like Dan in the chat here, but also when I was in middle school and stuff and then I always made comics as a kid and I just drew all the time as well as like a number of other things like skateboard and whatever but like I knew that this was something I'd always do in one way or, one way or another this would be like a thing I did I felt like I was more naturally good at this than anything else just because I took to it like organically and then art was like a thing in my family where my sister, uh, you know, she was, she's a lot older than me. And like when I was a kid, I saw her work. And one of my er earlier memories is this like cartoonist school or something like came to our house because they were, I don't know, like scouting artists or something. And they came to like talk to my sister and uh it was this guy and he was showing us like all these cartooning books and things and, and asking to like see our work and i remember like how excited he was about my work when i was little and thinking like oh that's cool like i didn't know this was something but other than that i had never really seen a whole lot about art and it was just something I kind of always did, uh, you know, always being into like the cards and things and like flare cards back in the day, ultra flare. And then also just big into like Marvel comics. Mm, yeah, always watching movies and things. I just wanted to be a part of that. been just a little over an hour i don't okay. know how you're feeling i'm gonna hop off in five minutes okay so if you just want to hang out hang out or if you want to ask a question or anything feel free and then we'll be off of here and next week i will be doing the comic again for sure me just doing a random painting isn't gonna be the norm um, yes, I do like pesto. And I make I make a good pesto. She makes a great pesto. Kim's a great cook. Like she makes so much amazing food. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like char shoe fish <laughs> last, last night. It was like insane. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was really good. It was so good. Oh, that's funny. I did not notice that. Apparently some people have started with gems and daggers on the Discord. Nice. Yeah, I put it out there in the general, just like talking about it. Like uh, I read what people were saying, but yeah, I wanted to put it out there as a thing to get started, you know, thinking about like, what are we going to put in it? What's it going <clears> to <throat> be like measured off of? How are we holding each other accountable? What does it mean to do that? Well, speaking of, Cleaverton says, if you guys talk a bit more about your weekly sessions to discuss your projects and goals, I found that really interesting and would love to know how it works. Sure. I mean, we basically are going to have our weekly review. So we sit down for a minute and we just write out everything. Like that we did in the past week that's essentially the point it's just like well make a big list of like things that you did and then also like how you have moved the needle on goals that you had set out prior and a number of things like that like habits and you know things that you felt like went well that week things that you felt were bad and it's it's a lot of like honesty too things. Dave has a lot more reflection and I have a, a lot more like um, forethought. I'm like planning for the week to come and Dave is looking at his week in review. And then like we kind of come together and then we talk about like what this week entails and then like what we're trying to accomplish or be better at. Um, and then the way I do that is like I look at my past week and I'm like, okay, this is what I was able to accomplish in this last week because I'm making basically like a to do list of goals and things that we have to do because I'm basically organizing our entire family's life like besides like the hours that Dave is working he is in charge of his own life but everything else I'm managing I'm like making all of the appointments I'm making sure all bills are paid I'm doing the grocery shopping I'm doing the laundry I'm doing this I mean and Dave will help out when he can um but I'm managing our entire life so we have to sit down and we have to be on the same page because this is a partnership you know when dave's not working a deadline he's helping me with these things but right now when he's like as busy as he is i'm taking all of that and watching the children during the day so we have to meet yeah. up and we have to like yeah, stay we just, grounded we just with each get other on the because same it just gets away from us you get on the same page with everything and then you just kind of work mm -hmm. out like what are we doing and mm -hmm. just like where are we at like yeah, yeah it's nice to we have that review um, we're not like saying are we doing a review or a meeting we're just like are we gonna do our like check-in basically like we're just checking in with each other because when we talk about everything that's very like Daryl like you know this is my husband we're also talking about our kids and like what they've done this week and you yeah. know like if we're proud of each other if we've noticed anything you know holding each other accountable so <laughs> It's a lot of, it's a lot. I <laughs> like that if we're proud of each other. I would love to start a meeting, yeah. but you know Sometimes. what? I'm not proud of you this week. <laughs> I let you, I let you know when I'm not proud. <laughs> you know, hey. I go, you must be so proud of yourself. You I go. So... <laughs> I said, well, well, with all that said, all those things that you mentioned, I'm not proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> not enough. Thus, con Try thus concludes this meeting of the midnight society and then i throw a bunch missed. of sugar in her face <laughs> hey dave do you play anything or do you have no time at all uh i was playing the final fantasy 7 uh rebirth that's that's really good. I haven't been playing it for a while though, just because I've been so so busy. You guys should do videos on how this guy balances life and being top tier at art. This is how he balances life. <laughs> yeah, I mean literally. Like I, I mentioned it on the last stream, like my 
without Kim like taking control of like <laughs> everything else, I just like if she wasn't doing that, like I get behind on like bill payments, like I'm just I'm just a mess. Even with, like, invoicing all that his stuff. clients sometimes. I'm like Yeah, like uh, everything like that. Like I just and but look at what vision. he's been able to do. Yeah. I feel like you've gotten better at it, though. Like, Yeah, I'm better at it. There are some things that I, like, leave completely up to you. I'm not... You're not, like, helpless at all, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know. <laughs> you know, right? You know how you do stuff. <laughs> how you know how to do those things. <laughs> yeah. Before you go, can we get a random Axel story? Okay. Usually I tell you how crazy he is. I'll tell you how sweet he was because I finished Breath of the Wild recently. And sorry, spoiler, but that game's been out for like eight years. Uh, at the end, when he sees Princess Zelda again, like, m it, mind you, my son has watched me play the entire, almost the entire playthrough. I beat Ganon, and he's like, and once again, they get married and live in the castle and they <laughs> love each other <laughs> he's like fin i don't know i just came out of he does his own narration <laughs> <laughs> yeah so now i'm playing tears of the kingdom and again spoiler but also has been out for like a number of years um i'm not done with it but there's a part where the zoras the fish people i don't think it has been out has for a number of years has it I guess yeah, it has. Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, it came out when we Couple. were... Couple. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, Prince Sidon and his fiance get married. And Axel was looking... He was sitting right next to me. And I said, Oh, this is Axel's favorite part. And he just looked up at me with the sweetest eyes and just was like... It is, like, you know, he didn't say this, but he looked at me like, it is my favorite part. And he just, like, <laughs> hugged me so tight. And I'm like, God, you're so, so you love love. It's so cute. And then he's also the same kid who was like, Demon Punch off of the toilet. So, I don't know. He's also the creator of Meat Sword. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not even a year for Tears of the Kingdom. Well, it's, that's only like a small little piece. It doesn't really, it's not integral to the story. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Not even a year? Really? Yeah, I was gonna say, it's, it's not that old. Sorry, time passes very differently for me. Okay, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thinker said that he just he just started the game. <laughs> Dave's reflections. My son kicked me in the nuts again. Ah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, meat sword is just the best idea ever. Swinging a swinging a huge piece of meat at a bad guy to trick him into taking a bite, and then they find out there's a blade <laughs> inside and it cuts him in half. I mean, I love that. And then he said there was a magic, uh, oh, what was it? It might have been like a sword or something. It, it was a, it was some magic piece of equipment that you use when you're fighting somebody. And what, it, what it does is it tears the person you're fighting in half, and then it casts a spell on them. So then they eat that half of their body. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's so weird. That's funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's very good, Axel. I love that idea. It's not enough that you cut me in half. Now I, I'm forced to eat myself. Mm -hmm. Loic's favorite thing right now is when he's like, everything is a weapon and he's like, look at my weapon. And it's just like a stretchy thing or something. And he's like, I could Shoot it to outer space, way into outer space. If I see a bad guy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slice him all the way up into outer space. Except for he has like the sweetest, tiniest voice. 
I know. It's like a cartoon character. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Alright, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Love to you all. Subscribe to the channel and hang out with us again next Thursday. I won't be on drugs next Thursday. I'll be I'll be normal. Thank you all.